Okay, welcome back to Information System Security. Uh, topic 1.4 of uh, this particular topic area, we focus on quality assurance. So some of the stuff we're going to talk about is some of the factors impacting and mechanisms for assessing uh, quality assurance. What are what do we mean when we talk about quality attributes? And the concept of a common criteria evaluation for assurance of IT products. Um, this relates back to, if we're looking um, to the topics, uh, we have this is going to be under uh, chapter six through eight. In the, uh, if we take a look under topic one in Moodle, uh, chapter six is the common criteria for information technology evaluation. Um, chapter 16 is also a link for the Microsoft Application Architecture Guide version 2.0. Chapter 16, basically we talk about different security attributes. Um, a couple of videos, um, Trusted Computing Base, um, QA, basically a, a, a brief tutorial about quality assurance, and also another brief video talking about some of the different quality attributes, what we mean when we talk about quality. So there's a bunch of terms that we, we, when we talk around this idea of quality assurance, you know, what do we mean by quality assurance? So there's a couple of words we use. So the first one we'll throw out there is the idea of what is this, what do we mean when we talk about assurance? So um, I think of assurance is we, you want to make sure that, you know, the idea of assurance is you want to make sure that um, elements, attributes are considered, you know, included in a system's design and operation. So, you know, we want to assure that, you know, these, that something has a security characteristic associated with it. Um, security assurance is specifically, uh, you know, assurance is basically, you know, uh, can be more uh, generally applied. Security assurance is focused specifically on the concept of secure, you know, the idea of security measures. So technical operational security measures Make sure it works as 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 expected. Um, you know, both protect the systems and the information in the systems. Um, in comparison, software assurance is you know basically to uh, make sure that cybersecurity is built into the design, inherently wired into the design of software, as opposed to uh, something that gets applied after the fact. So a couple, you know, bunch of things that kind of come into play with this idea of practices, tools, guidelines, rules, principles, procedures, how the, uh, programmers or, or develop, not just a programmer, but programmers and you know, software development teams need to uh, approach this idea of in implementing software into soft, you know, implementing security into software. Testing is really a validation of the, of you know, security and software assurance, what, you know, things are, uh, things are as built, as implemented, you know, and operate as, you know, as expected. And then certification. So finally, this idea of a certification. So certification is a, is a formal validation. So I think the key word, you know, it, the difference between testing and certification, uh, both kind of, you know, are, are focused in the same area, but certification is of a much more formal process of ensuring uh, components and systems to meet specifically defined criteria. Testing is related back to uh, you know, both the functional requirements, non-functional requirements of, of you know, the software you're, you're working with. Certification is much more of a rigorous you know, standards-based uh, application because really what it's designed to be is a, uh, an independent agency verifying that Software does what it's supposed to do, and it, it is, and has the appropriate security um, attributes. When we talk about the quality attributes, the words we use, the, the words we, we use for the most part is you know, either we call these the itties. From a software engineering perspective, we call these non-functional uh, attributes. You know, but you know the, these are the different characteristics that are associated with the software over and above the functionality it's supposed to do. So if you've got a, a program 
that was designed so for example to be a calculator obviously it, it, it calculates it does add addition subtraction uh, division multiplication you know, all, all those things however there's other attributes associated with it like availability that it works when you turn it on security interoperability manageability reliability scalability these are all different attributes and the term that you use uh, you said the non in, in one way of describing this would be non-functional attributes which to some in some cases that you people can get a, a, a have a misunderstanding of the, the kind of the non-functional that if it's a non-functional requirement, it's not important. Quite frankly, quality attributes are every bit as important as the functional requirements. You know, so it's a differentiator. You know, it's you know just because we, we use the term, it's non-functional does not in any way um, limit the or constrain you know what you know the importance of it. You know, and one of these quality attributes is security. So that security is one of a, it's of an entire range of different quality attributes. So we'll kind of we'll kind of walk through this, you know, availability um, defined as the proportion of systems time that where the application is functional and working uh, can be measured. You know, so actually one of the key things you can do with availability is you can get you can get established measurements of it. Measured as a percentage of total system time over of a predefined period. You know, how often? You know, how much is up? Um, can be affected by a whole bunch of things, systems errors, infrastructure problems, malicious attacks, system loads, you know, any number of things can um, potentially impact uh, an availability attribute. Security, you know, the capability of the systems to reduce chances of malicious or accidental acts, of, acts affecting a system. So, you know, the resilience of this is the, the ability to uh, prevent Unauthorized disclosure or loss of information. You know, the, uh, really, as we talk about, you know, is, is, as we've talked about in the past with security, the concept, you know, the, the three foundational concepts around security that you know we, we really focus in on is what we call the CIA triad, which is confidential, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. The security attribute is really kind of the is really a measurement of the com combination of confident. Of, you know the ability of that um, software to maintain, you know, preserve uh, confidentially integrity and availability, and a bunch of different, you know, there's a bunch of different techniques, you know, so you know, authorization, authentication, encryption, auditing, logging, you know, a, a kind of across the board, that makes up what we would consider to be the security attributes of it of a uh, of, of software. Some of the key issues is a whole bunch of different things, uh, you know, that, we're gonna, that, that can be used to um, basically to, to attack uh, software. So you know, just just this is just some examples. You know, user identity spoofing, you know, presenting false credentials, um, malicious input from SQL injection and cross-site scripting. That's more of a web-based um, attack. Um, protocol, which is pretty well established, pretty well defined out there. If you do a Google SQL injection, you'll see all sorts of different techniques can be used to to hack a, a website to be able to uh, compromise it. Uh, data tampering, you know, uh, being able to uh, you know manipulate data, you know whether your you know whether uh, the protection of data it becomes paramount. It's, it's, it's the integrity aspect of the CIA triad, so da you know, data tampering, um, being able to make ensure that the data is not changed uh, by unauthorized uh, individuals. Repudiation, you know, the idea of, you know, if an action is recorded and executed in a system or is done by an authorized person and it, it, the effect of that uh, update is, is, cannot be repudiated. All right. So the idea is, you know, you log and can confirm that if something is done, that it was done correctly and was done by an authorized individual. Uh, loss of sens sensitive data. As we, as we talked a bit about data as well. You know, you can, you can tamper with data. You can lose data. You know, in, in valid um, disclosure of data. You know, you, we see again and again and again on news story after story of you know, organizations losing control of data and you know having 
hundreds or thousands or millions of re of, of uh, customer records being compromised. And then what we call denial of service, basically service interruption, which is an attack on this, the uh, availability attribute of the CIA triad. So, you know, one of the things that is always a, you know, a, a well-known attack uh, method is to basically force a, you know, a website or force an application to fail. Interoperability, the terms we use around this is basically to ensure that um, applications can effectively and successfully communicate and exchange information between themselves. Uh, so definitions around this is, you know, establishment of, you know, what is the communication protocol? Uh, you know, and then how is data exchanged and, you know, kind of defining the whole interrelationship of data passing from one application to the other. A lot of this stuff is now done, especially, this is really, if you think about it, this is the basis of the internet. You know, the base, the internet is based upon this idea of everything can interoperate because there's a set of rules that everybody uh, works within. You know, it's this idea of compliance standards. Compliance is, is really, the, it lies at the heart of being able to maintain and sustain interoperability. Manageability. You know, making sure that a, a application or a uh, a system can be maintained, um, in basically in terms of you know monitoring performance, monitoring security, uh, you know, installing, deploying, upgrading applications. So these are all dimensions, different dimensions of systems administration. So you know the idea of you know you want to be able to a monitor for things like performance, for you know, and kind of activities. And then be able to make adjustments as necessary. So this is, you know, this is all kind of inherent um, capability that we you would expect to see within an application. Performance, you know, definition of it: responsiveness to execute actions within a particular period of time. Um, term that gets used a lot is latency. You know, time taken to respond, or you know, or throughput. There's a couple different, there's a couple different terms, but latency is one term that gets used. Uh, throughput is another um, term, another measurement of you know what is you know what is performance, what is good performance. Obviously, faster is better. You know, in terms of performance, some of the key issues we run into: um, reduced um, or increased response time, reduced throughput. And resource utilization; these are all different aspects of performance that are, you know that needs to be uh, monitored and uh, adjusted as necessary. Memory consumption, you know, the attributes of a uh, of a program: how much storage does it take up? Uh, a lot of times these days, you know, with large memory systems, this was this was actually a pretty significant thing in the past when you had very, very, very serious constraints on memory on memory capabilities of computers. Not quite so much now, but still can be a factor. Um, database server processing, you know, basically it could be potentially a bottleneck in the way the database is designed or how it's, it's executed and, you know, have an impact on throughput. And then, you know, another, the other area, another another uh, resource area to be to be considered when weighing looking at performance is networking. You know, increasing network Bandwidth consumption, you know, can can impact uh, performance. It's always interesting to know, in my experience, you know, networking always seems to be the first place everybody's go. Everybody goes to look. You know, we're having a network problem, and usually, uh, network the network support guys are very sensitive to that because I think they've, they've come to recognize that yeah, it is the first thing people would will take a look at if there's a performance problem. You know, okay, what's our network? What's our network? Uh, utilization, you know, and happening, what's happening in that domain. Reliability, def defined as ability of the system to continue as operating as expected. You know, the probability that the, that the system will not fail within a particular uh, specified time intervals. Um, a lot of issues you'll see, you know, systems crashes, you know, unreliable, un unreliable software are ones that will intermittently fail, usually at the most inopportune times. You know, or you can also define it as output. You know, that if you have a calculator that every 
fifth calculation is uh, will be or fifth or sixth calculation will be incorrect. But that's you know we would consider that to be an inconsistent and unacceptable. Um, also, in terms of reliability, you know, once again, we talk about the unavailability of, you know, you know, different um, resources. So, the avail so that can be, be anywhere along the line. It could be with the actual, with the processors. It could be with the networks. Can be with with data and databases. Scalability defined as the ability of the systems to either handle increases in load without impacting performance or availability. Um, scalability takes two forms. Um, historically, what you would see would be you would scale vertically, which means you get a bigger hammer, you get a bigger box, you get you add more memory, you add more CPU, um, you know, you get a faster processor, you get you know basically you you get a bigger box. Traditionally, that was the approach. So what you would end up doing is if you ran out of capacity, or you're running out of capacity, you would upgrade the entire box. Forklift the old one out. Forklift the new one in, and you know, run, run, you know, add more capacity that way. What we see now, though, most a lot of modern applications, particularly internet type applications, we see what we do is we add horizontally. So what you'll end up doing is, and this is what you see with Amazon, this is what you see with Google, what they'll do is they'll scale their capacity, like their web server capacity, by adding more web servers, adding more processors. So you have these massive, um, you know, web servers, you know, basically consisting of, you know, hundreds and thousands of individual machines that are all kind of chained together. And the, the way it's, it's constructed is that there's no um, dependencies between from one server to the other. So basically you can swap web servers in and out as needed. Uh, so this idea of you know, scaling horizontally, ideally, you know, the preferred way to be, you know, in both modern applications is to focus on horizontal scaling as opposed to vertical scaling, because you can do horizontal scaling. I think we've seen with, as, as we've seen with large web deployments, you can successfully implement, um, you know, scaling horizontally. And combining it with things like virtualization and, and cloud computing, you know, you can do some really remarkable things with, uh, you know, a, a horizontally scaled uh, computing platform. So some of the, you know, assurance when we talk around some of the, you know, what are the core principles around uh, software assurance, and the, these are kind of the core. All right, so dependability. You know, you want you want correct and predictable execution. Obviously, if there's, you know, if it intermittently gives you incorrect answers, that's not going to be a that is not quality software. That is actually a, you know, a uh, you know, a pretty big issue. Uh, resilience, survivability of compromise, uh, the ability to you know try to minimize damage and ensure a quick recovery to acceptable operating capacity. A lot of times what will happen in some cases if you get a machine will crash. In, in some ways, a machine crashing is actually an approach to you know, detecting an un, basically de, you know, responding to an, a, um, some sort of compromise in, you know, either within the machine or the application. What will happen is information will get logged and the machine will stop. It will you know, go down and then reboot itself. So it's... Um, so they don't lose 100% of it. You have the ability to go back in, check the log files, and correct what the problem was. Conformance, making sure that everything is operating as defined by the standards. So obviously, step one is to find standards, um, you know, and then perform measurements to making sure that those standards, uh, you know, things to operate within compliance of those standards. And then trustworthiness. You know, no exploitable vulnerabilities or malicious logic exist within the software. No, no backdoors. Uh, no unknown activities. No, you know, in terms of of, of uh, you know, taking information and, and doing things unexpected with it. So the idea of you know having a trustworthy software, um, you know, which is what happens is when you con if a system gets compromised, one of the big Characteristics of you know if, if a if a hacker is able to apply malware onto a system, you know the, the thing about that software that that platform is it is no longer trustworthy. Really, to restore it to trustworthiness, you really have to go back and 
almost rebuild it from the ground up to re basically bring it back into a, a, a trustworthy state. Um, common criteria. So common criteria is a, is a standard that was established around to basically a, define a set of criteria that, that we apply to secure IT products. All right, so this is a, you know, basically an industry, um, an industry uh, standard, industry approach. Um, so the idea is you have licensed, you know, these these standards, the standards associated for common criteria are established by organizations and are used as the basis for measurement for certification. Um, so as we say here, security certification of evaluated result product, evaluated product issued by the certificate authorizing screen. So if something is certified, uh, obviously it meets a you know a fairly high standard, you know, um, to you know and, and can be demonstrated and can be you know demonstrated and repeatedly demonstrated. So this is all you know. So you know, getting this is a is a is a, is a pretty big thing. Not everything is you know applied against the common criteria. Uh, security standard, but it is a, you know, when it is applied, it is it is something that it, it kind of get, it, you can be used as a as a validation or a measurement of uh, the security quality of a of a particular uh, platform. Just some you know some of the steps that go into you know this is how you you know what get what um, goes involved in terms of this uh, validation assurance or target of evaluation. So if you see kind of a, a rigorous, you know, expectation of checking processes, procedures, you know, um, you know, verifying that as you as you're moving things through, it's doing what it's supposed to be done. Verification of proofs, analysis of the functional test, independent functional testing, analysis for vulnerabilities, and last, you know, and you see this, you'll see this term, you know, vulnerability testing or penetration testing. Which is actually a, a standard approach. We see, you see a lot of organizations will, you know, at various points, maybe once or twice a year, will bring an outside agency in to actually penetrate, do penetration testing, try to access, compromise the organization's firewall, obviously under control conditions, and report back on the results. You know, then we can go back in and verify, um, you know, correct those issues, and then. You know, you know, prepare to move ahead. So it's all, all of these are all basically describing how you would do an evaluation. And just some um, within that, the, within this evaluation, kind of the different levels, e EAL1 uh, is being at the, as the lowest level being, you know, functionally tested EA, through EAL7, which is a formal verification of the design and, and tested as well. And that is everything you need to know about quality assurance.